Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today's video is going to be all about trying to win the game when you're playing in a light tank, especially when you're in a rather tricky scenario. And look at that enemy team. Oh goodness, we have some seriously hardcore players, and they're even playing in Clan Wars reward tanks. I'm in a tier 10 light tank, thankfully there are three artillery on our team, so maybe we can try and put them to work. So immediately, where should you go in your tier 10 light tank in this kind of a matchup? Well, remember this is purely subjective. For me, I was thinking, okay, Gorilla, Badger, T124 on the enemy team. They might try and rush along this flank to try and get into the position here, which will be safe from artillery. I was thinking the mediums will probably try and po put pressure in the middle and also make their way along the west into this kind of a scenario to shoot across here. And so that's why I wanted to avoid the middle. I wanted to use the mobility and the good camo rating of the T100LT to try and extend some view range along the east, try and get early spots on tank destroyers and try and get my self-propelled guns firing because I thought the middle of the map would be just not really the location you want to take the T100LT. This is a pure scout. This isn't an auto-loading medium or light tank or even something that has excessively good armor that maybe you can brawl in with some decent DPM. But oh dear, look. Object 907, M48, all pushing their way down this flank. There's a Super Conqueror spotted there as well. Yeah, this looks like you might be saying, oh, sod it. Oh, Super Unicorn coming at me in a Clan Wars reward tank, right? What are you going to do here? Well, immediately you've got to think, how can I possibly survive here? I could drop down on that ridge, or alternatively, why not do something that I think probably would surprise them a little bit and just blitz my way up that slope and now get into another location where I'm completely safe from them and hopefully I can lure them up the slope a little bit to get tanked by my team and artillery. Perfect stuff and I even managed to use the mobility of the vehicle to avoid them altogether. Now we've just completely changed the situation that would have been on that flank. Maybe if I, I hadn't felt like I was really wanting to try and do well in this battle because I love these kinds of opportunities. When I see decent players on the enemy team and when I see that maybe we have a far a less skilled team or a less experienced team than the enemies all combined, I feel like it's up to me to, to try harder in a way and try and see how I can get through it. As you kind of grow a little bit long in the tooth at World of Tanks, then it's really these kind of matchups that do become entertaining to play. So here we go, here's the platoon of their tier 10 medium tanks. They've pushed around the corner and they get punished heavily by the Jagdpanzer E100. Now I want to finish the object 704, sorry 907, I always mess that up, why do I always do that in my commentary? And I try to reload a premium round there to go through the lower plate of the 907, but unfortunately the terrible accuracy on this tank at 0.46 is unable to hit that lower plate and we bounce off the upper plate, but we've held them back. Sure we lose our Jagdpanzer E100, he managed to put in a single shot, I kind of wasn't hoping that he would be holding that location, and alternatively he might have fell back all the way to the other side of the ridge or alternatively use this position here to get some cover or sit up there but he made his choice he put in one shot he slowed down their advance a little bit and really now it's just up to me and I guess the object 268 who's also threatening them to stop them from advancing around this corner I'm using these bushes to be able to spot them without being spotted and you also notice that earlier when I spotted the Bat Chantillon 25T we were able to shoot him because he went behind a bush that was uh, enough of a distance away from him so that he couldn't spot us. So those are the only times you should really be shooting in your light tanks when you think, okay, can I get this one in without then opening myself to a whole world of hurt? And the whole world of hurt there being the tier 10 mediums of three tier 10 self-propelled guns on the enemy team. And also possibly, you know, the Super Conqueror and the Gorilla who will be sitting in these kind of locations here. And so we kind of secured this flank. And that's probably one of the most important things to do if there are three artillery on your team and even if there's one or two. But obviously when there are three it makes it all the more worthwhile to kind of not exactly accelerate down a flank, push a flank or even win a flank. But as long as you hold it and you can keep your artillery in the game, secure those three tier 10 vehicles on your team, then you can give yourself a good chance of winning. And you know, I love the synergy between light tanks and self-propelled guns. Sure, when I'm playing my heavies, oh, that 0.46 accuracy. You can see I was annoyed at the time as I shake my mouse, getting a little bit frustrated that we're unable to do much damage so far in this game. But yeah, I just love the kind of synergy between light tanks and self-propelled guns. And it's a pleasure when they're marking the map, when they're telling you their reloads. And so if you're a self-propelled gun player out there, please do so for your light tanks and your medium tanks, especially ones that are trying to use positions to look after you. It really does help massively. 
but of course when I'm playing in my heavies or arguably my tank destroyers I probably don't want self-propelled guns on the enemy team so it's kind of like a, a love-hate relationship probably more hate than love but at least when I'm playing my light tanks I do I do like to give a little bit of love to artillery until the ones on the enemy team start splash, splashing me in my bushes that I'm trying to hide in right especially in the new ELC even 90 so Anyway, we've held this flank, and look what the enemy medium tanks have decided to do. They've decided to fall all the way back along here. They spent the first five minutes of the game not really achieving too much. Now they're actually sitting in base, and whoa, wait a minute, just as I was planning to leave this location, thinking the Bat Chantillon had left, he's actually there. Wow, okay, so we put one into him on the move, we're going to put another one into him on the move, and that's because while this tank isn't accurate, it has amazing dispersion values when moving at 0 0.06, and also when turning the turret at 0 0.05, and what that means is that you, you basically just don't really even need to stop in this vehicle. I don't think I even use vertical stabilizers in this tank, I think I'm using a gun rammer, I'm using vents, and I'm using coated optics to try and bump up that rather poor view range for tier 10. 390? Oh god, there are tier 8 medium tanks that have got better view range than this tier 10 Soviet light tank, which I still feel is the best scout in the game, purely because of its mobility and its camera rating. And its low profile, I guess, obviously helps you to avoid the shells as well. So I tried to stop there to shoot the griller. Maybe I shouldn't have stopped, but I was hoping it was going to come up over the ridge line. And sure, while this vehicle is more efficient at keeping on moving and shooting on the move because of those excellent dispersion values, yeah, it's still going to be a little bit more accurate if you do stop and give the vehicle a full time to aim. So now, this is the part of the game where I really love to play in a light tank. You play defensively at the beginning. Sure, I, I guess if I hadn't used my wits and maybe if I got unlucky and got double tracked or hit by artillery, I would have died with that fairly aggressive spot at the beginning. But after that, we cool down, we calm down, and this is where light tanks just... You can use your mobility when there are smaller numbers of players on the enemy team to really lock down positions and to create new lines of fire for your team and especially your self-propelled guns and your tank destroyers to just lock down the map and then slowly grind them out. And of course, if I'm in this position, it's going to be far easier for my artillery to hit their tanks than it is for their artillery to hit me. So I track the griller and I'm going to load a high explosive round because while I can't damage the hull of his vehicle by hitting his tracks, I can splash a high explosive round on the tracks to finish off the remaining hit points of their tier 10 German tank destroyer, so great result there. Clearly, the Object 907 decided to put a blind one at me. It doesn't manage to do so, and right now it's just about slowing the game down. I'm hoping that IS-7 is going to be able to get rid of that Conqueror gun carriage. Oh, well, I'll just give him a little bit of a help. as that kind of funnel web spider of a self-propelled gun trying to launch his way over that slope to take out our Tier 10 Soviet heavy tank. And so right now, it's just about denying the enemy the positions that they want to have. This 907 wants to make his way up into that bush to be able to put pressure on the T124 and maybe catch any self-propelled gun snapping. This STB-1, he probably wants to try and slip his way up this slope to then try and go down this location, maybe sneak his way up here. Or alternatively, he might be pulling all the way back to try and flank around, and there you go. I'm happy I went to go and spot him from doing that. Okay, hello, STB-1. He misses me, I'm fortunate. I hit him. I guess I'm lucky to be able to penetrate his vehicle by hitting his lower plate there. And I'm just going, okay, well, uh, you've got one artillery, I've got three artillery. And they're marking the map clearly. They splash him. Do we get any spotting? No, we don't. Okay, so now I know that the T124 is flanking around. Why don't I go up here to proxy spot the STB-1? But he just probably didn't know the E4 was going that way. Tried to, I guess, maybe get away from me thinking that I was going to push him. And instead gets absolutely shut down by that 155mm tier 10 tank destroyer gun. And so slowly but surely, even though we're not doing the largest amount of damage and our spotting hasn't been very impressive this game, it's all about our presence. It's all about us denying locations, pivotal locations, to important tanks on the enemy team and obviously very skilled players as well. We're, we're effectively stopping them from being able to have fantastic games by just denying them locations and now we get to use our mobility knowing that the 907 is locked in to hopefully isolate the T92. There he is, I'm not sure if I was the one who spotted him or the E4. Hopefully he's gonna get shut down because we don't want to leave that tier 10 self-propelled gun in the game. There you go, good stuff. Looks like it was the E4 called Tornado on my team who does take him out picking up his second kill of the game. And so now the 907 finds himself in a 1 versus 5 scenario. The GWE-100 clearly pings the map, worried that the 907 might be making his way there. 
but I feel that considering the 907 is on such low hit points, he's probably going to still remain here and try and use those bush locations to try and get shots across at either myself, the E4, or the T92. Now, the E4 doesn't actually manage to spot the 907, which kind of alarms me. So I ping the map, and I ask the artillery to pre-aim, but just after I do that, I spot the 907, I take a swing at his tracks, and of course, that lowers my camera rating down to a point where he can shoot me, so I try to use my evasive maneuvers. The T92 fails to do the 10 damage to the object 907, and I stop there for a second, maybe thinking that I would no longer be spotted, but clearly the 907 maybe had um, dead eye or what is that designated target to spot me for a little bit longer or maybe he just saw where I stopped and puts a shell into me but because he paid his attention towards me that's now allowed the T92 to get his cap points up and the object 907 is going to find it very hard to be able to get towards the cap circle in this time so you see me making my maneuvers because I'm wondering will the object 907 somehow be able to vault up there no I'm clearly thinking that he's going to be going around here and so I'm using this circular move movement here to avoid his shots, use this bush for a little bit of cover, and when I see that the game has been won via cap, I go and I try and finish him off with a high explosive round, and wow, ladies and gentlemen, talk about being saved by the bell here, look where that T92 shell went, that would have killed him if the game hadn't ended, and so that 907 should be thanking his lucky stars that he gets through this battle with at least 10 hit points in tank. So while statistically this game is far from impressive, a third class mastery badge, 4,000 experience I guess for our double 886 base, I finished third on experience here, I finished sixth on damage with only 2,000 and less than 1,000 spotting. This video was more about keeping check on dangerous platoons on the enemy team to allow your platoons to flourish, and how important it is to come up with the plan in those first 30 seconds and, and also map control it, it's just so important in that there's no better class in the game than your light tanks for trying to to put that out against the enemy team or well, at least when you've got a few people supporting you right and so while i know this wasn't the most incredible game with regards to damage kills or even flashy exciting moments i hope it was useful to some of you as for me personally i'm, I'm far more proud of winning these kind of games than ah, just going and getting some kind of radley walters medal in a comment, right? So I hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And just a heads up that tomorrow update 922 is going to be released for the European server at least, and I expect for the Asia server and the North American server as well. And so this is your last chance to be able to pick up those Soviet vehicles and also that FCM 50T that I warned you about on Sunday. And so if, for whatever reason, you do not have a T10 or an Object 432 purchased in your garage and you can get it without having to spend loads of gold then go for it and as always thank you so much for watching you've been epic and hopefully i'll see you soon